uh, yeah, we are quite happy. We haven't damaged a plant yet. <laughs> yes. So we just hope uh, we can do go the distance. Are you satisfied? Yes, we are yes. quite happy. Maybe not so okay. fast like the other, but we still didn't any damage any plants. Yes, but like we said, it's, it's right. It's not only speed, it's also quality of work. We took uh, the pace up a little bit in comparison to task one because we saw uh, how fast some of the other robots went. Uh, so we thought we cranked the pace up a little bit. We optimized the steering for a rougher field, so uh, for rougher ground, and there we uh, had better results with lower speeds. But, but we noted that the field isn't that rough, so uh, we tried um, to put the speed a little bit higher, and it uh, worked quite well. Or we, at least we hope so. In the first task, we uh, wanted to uh, safely drive through the road um, because it was in the simulation at our computers a bit harder. Um, but we saw uh, it, it's also working with higher speeds. I think your robot detects the, the objects slightly before it, it's actually at the location of the object. Oh. How does that work? Yeah, maybe in, in the moment um, he recognizes it, he publishes the message. Um, so, um, yeah, then the marker is on the point of the robot, but the marker isn't at the point where the wheat actually is. I think you guys have the biggest robot I've ever seen in the field robot event. <laughs> How did you make it so big? Um, our first robot was very little, um, so we um, it got very messy when we upgraded it. So we decided that the next robot generation is a bit bigger, so we have enough space to implement uh, new stuff. So we made it uh, just at the start a little bigger, um, and yeah, it worked fine. This robot also exists in real, and it also drives like this in real. Um, so we are very confident with this prototype. Okay. And I'm a bit curious, uh, so what is the, what is the weight of the robot? Uh, it's about uh, <laughs> 60 kilograms, I think. <laughs> okay, that's really heavy. And how yes. much power does it deliver? It uh, has, I think, around uh, 1000 watts with hoverboard, hoverboard motors. Also, these hoverboard motors uh, weigh in total 20 kilograms, so they make, a, they are very heavy. <laughs> Uh, did you consider uh, robot pulling with this one, or <laughs> what was the motivation behind the design then? Um, now our, our first robot hasn't really much power, um, and we hadn't much speed, so we decided we we want enough power and enough speed for every task that maybe that may come. Um, so we overdimensioned it a bit, and uh, yes, we are very really really happy with this. And also, this robot will um, be in real tomorrow in the uh, task five. We are uh, using image recognition with uh, our color base. And um, then we are looking these color detections in the um, in the dev point cloud um, because we are using two Intel RealSense dev cameras in the front, um, so mm -hmm. we can see uh, we have a 3D picture um, of a map, and um, then we will look the exact positions of these uh, detections. We go to flight number two for task three with 28 points. Uh, what is the team? Wow! <laughs> well, you're off to get it to get your exit. Thanks. Cool. And now we can push objects, yes. Cool. <laughs> ah, great. And it, it's actually pushed. And then next year you have time to fine tune and make sure you can also do separation. Yes, exactly. This solution cannot handle weeds and litter that are very close uh, to the, to the mesh No, we had to uh, decide how um, how broad the shield will be because the broader it is, the more becomes a uh, mice harvester. Uh, to the winner of task four, uh, I think that uh, it's very important to stress that this was a really, really difficult task. Uh, but this team won it. They had a very good demo afterwards to show you that they could do more than what they did during the task. <laughs> Oh, yeah, this is the same.
Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Yes, the second uh, prize for the overall uh, winning uh, this year will go to Ceres. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Hello from Münster, can you hear us? We are currently in Steinfurt in our laboratory uh, on our test field, as you can see here. Uh, and we would like to show uh, just the developments of the robot uh, from the past years. This was uh, the robot we precipitated in the field robot event for the first time with. It was in 2019 and uh, we were quite happy with the results. Um, but we realized that it wasn't uh, big enough and capable enough to do um, real tasks, to do real work in the field. So we decided to use the same concept but to build a bigger prototype. And that's the robot you saw in the simulation yesterday. That's the Ceres 2. As you can see, it looks quite similar to the one you saw yesterday. Um, and we already heard that it is a quite big robot. It weighs about 60 kilos. Um, but Mark is going to tell you a little bit more about the details of this new generation of the robot. So yes, this is our new prototype. Um, we used uh, Intel RealSense dev cameras, um, also we used one in the Ceres 1 and um, now in the new prototype uh, we used four of them, uh, two in the front and two in the back to see the rows in front and the rows in the back so we can navigate more precisely. Um, also the uh, motors have a total power of 1000 watts um, so we are using hoverboard motors, um, they are quite heavy so um, um, the, the whole robot is very heavy, um, but also he's very big, so we have much space to uh, build things into it and to test things. That's very, really important. We discussed this already yesterday, um, that with, more, with much space uh, you can also improve much and uh, it's really uh, good for testing. Yes, on the front of the robot you can see uh, a development we made in the past year that's an automated hitch. There you can see it. It currently is uh, 3D printed as a prototype but we, uh, we plan to make it a little bit tougher in the future. Um, this hitch is orientated uh, to some hitches uh, we saw on real tractors with a triangle and that is used to center um, the trailer um, and make the autonomous coupling a little bit easier. For the coupling, we use the depth cameras as well to orient, uh, to find the trailer or the tool we want to couple with the robot, and then this hitch can auto autonomously uh, drive into the um, the counterpart of the hitch on the tool uh, and connect with that. So now we come to the thing we built to connect with the robot, and that's a trailer with a robot arm. Um, this arm um, based on an excavator arm. Um, the advantages uh, of an excavator arm or is um, we could use uh, powerless motors, so they are a little bit uh, or not so expensive. Uh, these elements are powered um, with a trapezoidal thread, which are powered by these uh, motors. Um, yes, uh, we have uh, two. Uh, rotate this arm. We have under this trailer um, a warm gear which is uh, also powered by a stepper motor and uh, we are able or we calculated that we are able to lift up to uh, six kilogram right now but we uh, haven't tested it yet because uh, we are uh, yeah it's work in progress we are not ready yet. Um, yes um, now, because uh, this arm is uh, made uh, out of steel and aluminium, uh, we had to uh, build onto some counterweights because uh, it would fall over. I'll tell you a, a bit about the hand in the front. Uh, we have some cool features, I think. Uh, for example, we can um, change the tool head in the front of the arm. Uh, by now, we have only one uh, hand, um, yeah, and we call it Mr. Uh, grabs because it grabs things. Uh, we want to grab some um, pumpkins, and 
Another feature is, uh, yeah, you can just de uh, attach this arm. Um, all right. Oh. So, and it's on. Um, let me check if I can rotate the, uh, the front. Um, yeah, one feature. Okay, it's, it's rotating. Um, the, the hand in the front can rotate endlessly. Um, and in the back, um, we have all the electric components. Uh, so we can use the electric components for another attachment. Um, and yeah, the front is fully mechanically. Um, we use um, almost, uh, we printed almost everything. Uh, just some electrical parts uh, are, uh, we had to buy. Um, yeah, for example, the springs in the front um, are also 3D printed. Um, and yeah, it, it works <laughs> quite well. Uh, and the fingers are a little bit flexible because there's, there are also 3D printed springs in the, in the middle. Um, in the back of the, the hand is a force resistor that measures the force which uh, how much the fingers are pressed against the object. So we can just say close um, the fingers and uh, close um, as long as the force is um, not that great, I think. <laughs> yeah, um, and I think we can show you a, a bit. Yeah, so now we are gonna see a small demo of the arm. Um, we have to say we just finished it this morning, uh, so don't expect too much. Um, but it is looking quite cool, we think. Um, I hope it's working. <laughs> so now it's grabbed as long as the pressure is building up. It's all cal calculated, it's not even closed. And so this action is performed autonomously or is somehow manually controlled? No, currently it's a hard-coded pattern, um, but we plan to do it autonomously. Um, we have a camera on the, uh, on the hand so that we can use it to center <laughs> to center the pumpkin and then pick it up. Okay, and but, uh, this camera control is not available yet? No, it's, uh, we just finished the mechanical arm uh, that are the next steps we want to take. <laughs> well, I, I think this is a very impressive demo. Yeah. For example, it also would be a use case for task four we did yesterday. But unfortunately, we didn't have the trailer in the simulation yet. Uh, but maybe, maybe on the real field in, in the next event, we'll see. Uh, so the, the trailer and the, the arm is, is just the picker is, the, is, a, is a, an, an own uh, system, right? It's not connected to the robot, I guess, right? Um, yes, it's planned to have an own, um, an own battery and just be uh, connected via the hitch, uh, so the robot can uh, couple it autonomously um, when it needs it, and then it will communicate uh, via Wi-Fi uh, with the computer um, on, the, on the trailer. And then you can detach the hand, and the hand itself does not contain any motors? Uh, yes, exactly. Um, so that, that means that you can easily exchange uh, different grippers, and each gripper right. can be very simple and cheap, Right, and maybe I can show you how to decouple it, but it's not working quite. Okay, it's working. Oh my god. Thanks yes. very much. Thank you. Congratulations to Münster of the University of Applied Sciences. Thanks. You won the three soil task. Thank you very much. That's great. We saw, of course, also that you did uh, a lot of uh, developments and uh, it also worked. I mean, partly remote controlled, but 
Anyway, this is uh, the complexity was there and also very close to agricultural idea and application, of course. So, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, and we especially want to say thank you to our two guys who put a lot of effort in this for the past two, uh, for the past year. They did a really good job. So, special thanks to them. They worked really hard. <laughs> yeah, thank you.